All right, so we're live on Facebook, everybody. Cash Call Podcast back again for another week. And uh, I don't know, you know, I just do that basic intro, but like I was telling Brian um, in the green room, I was uh, on the uh, Red X podcast. They interviewed me last week. They're all fancy, man. They have like a nice, beautiful intro they play. They're running it on StreamYard. It goes out to all these places, you know, like show notes are in there. All the comments that come from all the venues that they're publishing it to go to one place and you can, they can answer the chat right there. So Brian and I are going to take it up a notch. We're going to make Cash Call professional, right? All right. Well, after four years, I guess we're due. So after four, well, you know, it's, I am a procrastinator at heart. And so it takes forever and a day for me to get anything done. Yeah. Uh, I got a technique on that, but that's another thing. Okay. Anyway, move forward. Nice. <laughs> You're going to have to help me with that technique. So Brian, Absolutely. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about, man, uh, before we get into playing a call and I have a funny call to play today, which is great. Um, you know, normally we're, we're di slicing and dicing here, but now I just have a funny call because, you know, we've all been in that world if we're not currently, and it's just fun to hear that stuff. But what I wanted to talk about today is um, it's the beginning of the year, man, and the market's down uh, in terms of real estate. It's slower than it was in terms of sales, fewer sales happening. Um, and what is going on is that a lot of these agents that I talk to and that we interact with are, are really filling the pinch. And that's because they don't realize that they have to work harder than they've worked in a while. And, you know, it occurred to me today, it's like, listen, for you to sell as much real estate as you sold last year, you're going to have to work harder. You just have to work harder to sell what you sold last year, let alone more. Can, can, can I offer a different perspective just for fun? Go for it. I don't think you have to work harder. I think you have to work different. And here's what I mean by that. I'm going to use 2021 instead of 2022. But in 2021, your main job was to be available to answer the phone and sprint to the house as on the buy side. On the sell side, it was to get to the listing point as quickly as possible, close as hard as you, as you could and get the yarn and sign the yard. Would you agree with that? Yeah, pretty much get it on paper and don't screw it up was this. So that's process that was 2021 that continued through a good probably quarter and a half of 2022 interest rates start going up and all of a sudden the FOMO is gone like I believe that FOMO drove 2021 right that oh, yeah. oh my god if I don't buy a house now I'm gonna have to pay you know the interest rates so low all that kind of stuff so why am I saying you don't have to work harder at the end of the day, the majority of us out there as single agents or agents on a team are not looking to close 100, 150, 200 transactions per year as that agent. Now, a team might be, but one agent's realistically, you know, you close 50 deals between 50 and 100, you're a rock star, right? Okay. So, so here's my point. All we have to do is shift. And here's what I mean by that. Shift from I'm going to be available, I'm going to show 30 houses, I'm going to write 27 offers aren't going to get accepted. What you have to shift to is I have to lead generate. That's it. Oh, yes. Well, that's what I mean when I say work harder. So and I, if, I'm just saying work different. Yeah. If you had a handful of conversations a week last year, you better double or triple that, right? If you If you spoke to five people a day, speak to 10, right? It's just you're going to have to have more volume. Yeah. And, and that I 100% agree with. I, the reason I said it the way I did, a lot of agents kept hearing me say exactly what you were saying. I got to work harder. And I was like, it turns them off. They're like, oh, I don't want to work harder. I'm working my ass off. I don't have more. No, you don't have to work hard because here's the reality. If you don't have anybody to show property to, if you don't have any listing appointments to go on, you got to lead generate. I mean, at the end of the day, you need clients. And, and to, again, for me, the point is, I don't think we actually have to work more hours. I just think we're going to have to do a different activity. And that's the activity that most of us don't love. But you guys are here on Cash Call. You're obviously interested in learning how to have more and better conversations with people. Yes. So have more conversations. And then, you know, I think the other thing we can add on to that, Brian, and this is the same thing that, that we had to do, you know, during coronavirus is you have to shift what you qualify as an A buyer and as an A seller, right? Absolutely. Um, because the qualifications change. The uh, a lot of buyers uh, ability and or motivation is not what it what it was previously and so the answer the truth is that fewer people are going to have the ability or motivation to transact right now and you just have to talk to more people to find those that will and can <clears throat> yeah and you and I are in 100% agreement with that yeah in fact um when i was um i was just doing a y lopo uh, webinar i was talking to Libya, and uh you know we said listen uh, the thing is <clears throat> 
right now you think the market really sucks if you only talk to two people and both of those people can't or won't buy or sell right now. But if you talk to 50 people and only five of them can uh, uh, or will buy or sell in the near future, then things are not looking as bad. So it's a matter of perspective. Well, and I want you to consider this. So realistically, it depends on how good you are at this lead generation game. But I'm going to do some very simple math. And I'm going to guess that the majority of the people listening to this will say, yeah, I can do that. And here's the question. Can you book one appointment a week with a new person? When I say book an appointment, I'm not talking about the person you've been showing houses to or your current seller. I'm talking about someone who you've never met in person before. Can you book one appointment a week? Yep. I'd like to think so. Let's say that you're not super good at converting and you only close 50% of the people that you meet. I'm going to give you two weeks off a year. That's 50 new appointments a year and that's 25 closings. Yep. There you go. So Brian just gave everybody here the prescription. If you're not already meeting with a new buyer for a first time showing or a new seller for a listing appointment once a week, that's your goal. You have to do it once a week. You have to get it once a week. If you're already getting at least once a week, go to two a week. How hard is that, right? Simple. Yeah. And two a week gets you to the point of kind of, I mean, now you're talking about 50 deals a year. And I'm again, I'm talking about the agent who's not super good at converting. Like, yeah. imagine if you get that up to 70%. So 50, 50 appointments at 70% becomes 35 deals. 100 appointments at 70%. I hope you guys could do that math. That's 70 deals. But I mean, really it's math and math is boring and none of us like math, but if you do the math, it's actually pretty simple. Now, I, I, want, I want to also say it's not always easy. It's not always easy to get a couple of appointments a week, but if you consistently do the things that Dale and I are talking about here, it may not be easy, but it, it is something that we know what to do. We call people, we talk to them, we set appointments, call people, talk to them, set appointments. And I know that sounds boring, but you know, sometimes, sometimes part of our work is boring. <laughs> right. Well, listen, I have a couple of tips for that. One is uh, if you're not already using referral lead sources, we uh, we were talking, we just interviewed um, Sasha uh, from Fort Worth. You know, he just talked about his Z buyer seller lead uh, program that he was using. But, Great you know, point. I've got a PDF that people can download with 35 referral sources, right? And this doesn't include the Dave Ramsey's and other things that you really have to pay a lot of money up front or, you know, be vetted into, but there's tons of referral lead sources out there that you should be yep. plugged into and they will give you people to talk to. Likewise, try out FISBOs and expireds, get Red X, get the data, make the calls and set some appointments, man. Like you can absolutely be setting one to two new meetings per week if you're utilizing the resources that you can get. And, and there's a lot of resources out there. Um, so yeah. if you aren't, if you don't have enough people to talk to, you just aren't leveraging the resources properly. I agree. And I hear a lot of people pushing back on this. But Dale, I don't want to pay 35%. Well, 100% of zero is still zero. So yeah, exactly. And, and you got to look at it this way. Like if, if you just went, if all you did is use that referral source, you set an appointment or two and you quit, then yeah, it's going to be expensive, but you use it to supplement. You supplement your database with it. You supplement your deals with it so that you have more deals in the pipeline. Well, and, and, and I think we're going to need to play a call here a second, but I want to add one more thing before we actually do cash call. Um, think about this, that client that you paid 35% referral fee for on. If you look at that as one simple transaction, you stick it in the box of, well, I would have made $10,000. I only made $6,500. I can almost agree with you. I still don't agree with you, but I can almost agree with you. But hey, what if you close 10 of those people this year and five of them gave you a referral for next year? So we've got to start thinking bigger picture. Now, if you got a 50,000 person database, start calling your database. It's great. But if you're somebody who's going, man, I don't know where my next deal is coming from. Get some of these less less than what deals are going to pay you less. But again, if somebody bought a $500,000 house, you know what they're going to refer to you? People, other people who buy $500,000 houses. So yeah, I paid a big referral fee, but you got, we've got to look at this from a big picture. Unless your plan is to get out of the business in the, in the next six months, big picture matters. And you've got to be thinking strategically, not just tactically. Yeah, absolutely, man. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so I just dropped my email in the chat there. I can email you guys the PDF of the referral lead sources. We got like 35 on the list and I challenge, I want to, I want to, I want to talk to the first person that does all 35 of those things. 
because I've never met anybody that had more than two or three of them. Well, and I've got more than two or three of them, but I don't have 35. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll download your PDF. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime, Brian. Um, all right. So let me play this call first. All right. So this was like a, this was a call where, you know, the, um, apparently they're calling this agent back and it's kind of like, he's getting pranked by some kids. <laughs> Fun. Yeah. Are you looking for a house? We're at yeah. Michigan, Kalamazoo. Uh, actually, uh, <laughs> actually, I'm looking for one in uh, Nebraska. Oh, gosh, yeah. Well, unfortunately, I'm not licensed in Nebraska, brother. Really. No? Mm -mm. Nope. You know anyone I want? Yeah? Yeah, I know, I know some people who I could probably have them, I could have them reach out to. You. you think you can uh, give me, you think you give me some pizza? Pizza from Nebraska? No, just from like Papa John's or something. Oh, gotcha. You guys you sound like you're pretty hungry. Yeah, I'm actually really hungry. Yeah, you sound like it. You sound like you're hungry. So here's here's what I recommend if you want to get some people. Yeah. The only thing I need you to do, you got a pen and paper on you? Yeah, I got a pen and paper. All right, perfect. Write down this. Write down this. Here's how you spell it. It starts with a J. Okay, wait. You got one second, one second. Yeah, no problem. All right, I got it. J. Yup, J O B. Get a job. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. That is really funny. <laughs> All right, so you got to have some fun with it, right, man? Like, it's a grind making these calls, having the conversations. Um, it's, it, it really is a grind. And it's just funny to hear that, you know, like, that was clever. He thought on his feet, man. Write it down. J O B. Go get a job. You can get some pizza, kid. I got to go. I, I love it actually. And, and here's the thing. Um, and Dale, we need to read the comments here in a second, but um, I love it because what did I just talk about earlier? You know, sometimes it's a grind. I could see me getting off. That, I bet you that guy shared that, that conversation with 30 people. They all laughed about it. And, and, you know, it's fun, obviously not a lot to learn there directly from scripting, but at the end of the day, Hey, why not? You know, I can tell you this once upon a time I was selling some air purifiers and somebody telemarketed me and I recruited them to sell for me. That was a fun conversation. I didn't think it was going to work, but she ended up working for me. And I was like, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. So have that's fun. Great. I mean, why not? You know, uh, it's it, just have some fun. That That's really, yeah. awesome. you know, one of the, one of the calls that I like to remember is uh, I spoke to a FISBO. The FISBO was adamantly opposed to using me. And so I just asked the FISBO if they had anybody else they knew that was looking to sell that would consider an agent. They said, yeah, you know what? Uh, this woman I work with uh, at school, she's looking to sell her house too. Literally connected me to her. And she ended up like buying and selling and then got a divorce, bought and sold again and represented, I think probably four or five transactions over several years because I asked a FISBO for a referral. <laughs> I, I love that. I, uh, once upon a time I was in bold for all of the, for all you KW agents out there. And uh, a friend of mine called um, a phone number. It was a bad phone number. It, it was a human. They answered it, but it wasn't, Hey, is this Bob? You know, whatever. And no, this isn't Bob. I don't know who the hell's Bob, you know? Well, hey, this is Tim and blah, 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 blah. By the way, are you looking to buy? You guys, you know, actually, I am actually considering that he converted this guy who was a bad phone number, you know, and that. So just really a, a kind of a crazy things that happens out there. I, to, to my, I think Dale's point and my point is you got somebody on the phone. They're a human being. They know people. Ask the next question. What's the worst thing going to happen? They're going to hang up on you. I mean, right. you already you already got to know for them working with you. Ask the next question. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, Eric Line, while I've got you on the phone, know anyone? Absolutely, man. I mean, the Hail Mary, that FISBO, that Hail Mary paid off with multiple transactions, right? I'm like, all right, well, <laughs> apparently everything's been no here. Let me try this one last question. Yeah, why not? And again, it's fun, right? I think it's fun to do crap like that. Well, since you don't want to work with me, you know anybody who does? Yeah. Uh, let me just say this again for everybody who keeps asking me to direct you to the PDF. I put, dropped my email address in the chat. Uh, so just shoot me an email. I'll email you the PDF. Um, cool. So, uh, Brian, you have a call for us today? I do. It's slightly longer, um, maybe uh, slightly more applicable. <laughs> but uh, but your, your call, I thought that was the most fun call we've had in a long time. Okay. Yeah, so I just figured, yeah, I figured we'd play a fun one. I mean, we're always like, yeah. you know, slicing and so, dice. Oh, this is what I want to say. Wait, wait. I wanted to say this one thing to everybody listening. 
And Brian says this a lot of times. He's like, listen, Dale and I pull these things apart and, you know, we're trying to take you up to the next level or trying to give you that 5% more, whatever it is. And, you know, one of the things that I want to say about call reluctance and or if you aren't making enough conversations or you're avoiding doing it or avoiding making that, having those uh, conversations, just give yourself permission to do it poorly. In spite of what we do here, in spite of the fact that we're constantly trying to train you to do better and sometimes laugh at it, give yourself permission to do it poorly. Um, I give this example. I just started working out with a trainer. I think he's one of the best trainers I've ever worked out with. The reason he's one of the best trainers I've ever worked out with is because when I show up, if I say, I really don't feel like being here today, that's code for don't kick my ass. And he doesn't kick my ass. He's like, fine. he lets me do a half-ass job because that's what I said. And I told him, hey, that's great, man, because the thing that will make me quit fastest is if you kick my ass every day, if I have to show up and grind every single time I get here, I will quit. But if you allow me when I don't feel like it to just be here and do a half-ass job, then that is awesome. And so what I'm telling those people is if you have call reluctance, if you're avoiding making these contacts, if you are trying to do other things and you aren't observing your time blocks, ease up on yourself. Don't be perfect. Don't worry about winning. Don't worry about crushing it. Just show up and at least do a half-assed job. There's a, a book called The Millionaire Mind by a guy named T. Harv Eker. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he says in that book, and it's a good book, 80% of life is simply showing up. And that's what I heard Dale say. He showed up. He felt like crap. And there was no way he was going to excel at his high, but he's, he showed up. And I love that. And honestly, that's what this call right here is in my mind. The call that I'm about to play. Cool. It, we got an appointment. I'll, I'll share that. I'll, you know, but at the end of the day, Dale and I are going to pick this apart because the reason we got this appointment, and I want you guys to understand that, is not because the agent did an amazing job, not because the agent, you know, learned all the scripts and said all the right things. It's because she showed up, and that's it. Because if she wouldn't have shown up, she doesn't have this phone call. And if she would have had somebody who was a, a more challenging lead, she probably wouldn't have got it either. But I'm, you know, someone Tristan put something up in lab coats the other day about something. I, I made this comment. If you just show up, if you just take action, I'm not saying that you're going to get the result that you want, but you'll get feedback. And the other thing is, if you take no action, you'll never get a result. And, and that's, you know, I, and I'm not sure how that workout went for you, but I guarantee you this, it's better than not going. Oh, yeah. Listen, uh, you know, I still do something. It's more than nothing. Uh, yeah. But it's just, I don't get my ass kicked, right? right? It, to where I'm like, because I know how I am. And uh, if I'm not in the mood, I, I mean, I'll do what I'm told. But if I do that, and, and I don't have the drive to be doing it, it really puts a negative spin in my brain. And then if I have to do that every single time, there'll be a certain point where I'm like, I really don't feel yeah. like it. I would just rather say no than go get my ass kicked. You know what I mean? I love it. Awesome. All right. Well, I don't want to, I want to get this call in. So uh, although Dale and I can pontificate for another 30 minutes, let's listen to this call. Hey, with the Curtis Realty Group. How are you? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Good. Um, so they let me know you may be interested in property in Bella Vista. Yeah. Um, I'm going to look up the address right now. Was it on Ramsey? That on was, Ramsey? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay let me get that pulled um, up okay so i want to start with this again this ends up being a positive result she ends up showing the property to this guy there was nothing good about that intro i mean and yeah. i'm not trying to jerk about it but there was nothing good about that intro she basically fumbled and stumbled if you're taking a call and in this case she actually knew the address and asked him so instead of that just say hey let's just do this you know, I, this is so and so with Curtis Realty Group. Just reaching out to you because uh, Zilla said you were interested in one, two, three Main Street. I'd love to know if you'd like to take a look at the property. If you have any questions, that's the script or some version of that. But yeah. you can't say the script if you don't put the address in there. And she had the address. How do we know that? Because she told us she did. So be careful with those little things because a a, a guy like this is just going to yeah whatever. He's just kind of a whatever guy, but. Someone like me or Dale might not have been tolerant of that. So, but, all right. Uh, I'm it makes you question whether you have the right person around. Amen. Be confident, even if you're not. 
Were you, um, did you have questions about it or like to schedule a showing? Yeah, uh, I did have some questions. So I think I've been looking for, uh, it seems like a little while now. And right. it's, it's kind of, I don't know, I guess on the cheaper side of houses around there. And I was, I was just wondering if there's anything concerning with it or why it's been on the market so long. Can you pause it for me? That's an example of why I say don't ask if they have questions about the property. And I appreciate that. Yeah, she probably doesn't know the answer to this or she's going to have to fumble or lie her way around it. And so um, generally when I teach now, I say don't ask for questions, just ask for the appointment, right? Hey, looks like you're interested in this address. When would you like to go see it? Believe yeah. me, if they're committed to questions, they're going to bring you back to the questions. And I think you're 100% right, Dale. And honestly, um, that script is the same script that I used when I was an agent, an active agent selling property. And I'm going to pat myself on the back here, see if I can't stretch my arm and, you know, hurt my arm doing it. But I was good enough that I could pivot through all that stuff. If you're an experienced agent, my question, my, my script works. But if you're, if you're new at this, skip that question because I was always ready to answer those questions and knew how to do it. I knew how to pivot real well. But again, um, if you're a newer agent going, man, I don't, I don't want all these questions are going to get asked. Don't ask for the questions. I, I love, I love that approach. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, they will bring you back to it. And we can, I even have some script handling on how to deal with that stuff. By the way, everybody, when I said send it to my email, I realized I was not chatting it to everybody. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, Giovanni. So Giovanni's like tearing his hair out because he can't find my email address. And I'm like, what's wrong with the guy? Oh, it turns out I only messaged it to the panelists and not to everybody. So my For apologies, me. everybody. <laughs> I put it to everybody. So everybody should be able to see it now. Uh, sorry about that. And thanks, Jeff Bonk, for reading the directions. That's so funny. Um, nice. So here's the quick script around. Let's uh, let's do let's do this, Brian. You have questions. I just want to demonstrate how we can get around that kind of stuff. Okay. So um, Zillow's going to connect us. Hi, this is Dale uh, um, with whatever Realty. Looks like you're interested in one, two, three Main Street. Main Street. When would you like to go see it? Hi, uh, Dale. I just got a couple of questions. Oh, okay. Fantastic. I'd be more than happy to answer those for you. Uh, so did you have a particular day and time you'd like to go see this if everything checks out for you? Uh, yeah, assuming it all works out, I'll, I'd like to go tomorrow at one. Okay, great. Now push me back to questions. Stop me and say, I want to, I want to answer my questions first. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure I want to see this Dale. So what's, uh, well, I just have a couple of quick questions, man. Sure. What questions do you have? Okay, there you go. And then I could add, do you want me to ask the questions? Yeah, um, ask the questions. yeah like uh, I, I see that this house has been on the market for 380 days. What's wrong with it? <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. All right. So why has this thing been on the market for 380 days? That makes sense as a, as a good question. Any other questions that you would have about the property, Brian? No, I just, I'm just concerned. You know, it's price significantly lower than everything else in the market. And, uh, it, you know, it just feels too good to be true. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Listen, that makes a lot of sense. And um, even if I knew exactly why uh, it has been on the market this long, you and I, when we go look at it, might actually find some other things or we might find some redeeming qualities about it. So why don't we go check it out first and see if we can figure that out. Uh, what day and time works best? Or you said Wednesday at one. Uh, so I've got you locked in for that. I want to blah, 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 blah. Right. So basically, I didn't even get to demonstrate uh, fully what we do, but uh, let's say that Brian leads. He's like, um, hey, yeah, I'm interested in that property. I've got a couple of questions. Um, great. You know, if everything checks out, would you want to go see it? Yeah, well, maybe. But here's what I want to know. Uh, you know, question one. OK, got it. Uh, I hear you. You want to know about question one. Any other questions? Yeah. Question two and three. OK, got it. So you want to know question one, question two and question three. Totally going to get the answers for you. And I wanted to find out what day works best for you to go see it. If you like the answer to those questions, right? I'm going to try to bring you back again to setting that appointment. And a lot of times you can get somebody around their question just by simply repeating the question to them without actually answering it. Yep. Because they know you heard them. And theoretically, I'm going to, I'm going to get you the answer to that question. That's the, that's the psychology behind that. And it works. And uh, great approach, Dale. I, I really appreciate where you're coming from there. So I, I want to spend a minute on this property is because we're going to kind of run out of time here. But basically what's going to happen here is, and the reason I gave the objection that I did or the questions that I did to Dale was because this property that we're looking at is significantly priced lower than everything else on the market. So, you know, what I would do in that situation, assuming I had access to a computer, is I'm going to look that up, 
but in the meantime, I'm doing discovery. Hey, Dale, while I'm looking that up, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's some good logical reasons, but just let me ask you a couple of questions. And I'll say this, the agent does some good discovery here and, you know, gets that, gets some of that going. But one of the things that I saw when I looked this up, this house is priced and I'm going to use price per square foot. I don't like that, but I'm going to use it anyway. About $50 per square foot, less than the, than most of the other houses in, in the area. So what's going on though, is it needs updating. And, and that's really what it comes down to. So when you look at that, you could say, Hey, by the way, Dale, I mean, obviously you've looked at the pictures on this because they're looking at it on Zillow. Are you comfortable with the um, the fact that this house isn't updated? Is that something A, that you'd be comfortable living in or B, that you would be comfortable doing a remodel on? Yeah. And now I'm getting, getting them talking about what they like and what they're at. And, you know, maybe the guy's very willing to do a remodel. I mean, we get those clients all the time who are like, yeah, I want something to fix. And, you know, good for you. I don't want to do that because that sounds hard. But um <laughs> But there are people who love that crap, right? I'm just none of them, you know. Yeah. The only thing I'm going to hit with a hammer is my thumb. So, so you know, <laughs> it's just I'm not super. I'm not an idiot, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to build nothing. So, right. but anyway, no, I'm. I'm, I'm gonna... pick, my wife and I are very picky, and so we want we want your shit show because you know I'd love to tear it down and make a new one, or at least I want to customize it to what I want because we're just never going to be happy with what somebody else did. Well, and, you know, full disclosure, I'm in the process of buying a house right now, and I'm about to probably dump a hundred grand into it, but I'm not going to be there. I'm not swinging the hammer. I'm paying yes. a guy, you know, Matt, I know I'm that Matt. I can make more money selling real estate than, than oh, swinging yeah. a hammer. So yeah, you're, you're way a man after my own heart because uh, mm -hmm. I don't know construction either. So, so, all right, but I, I'm going to play just, I'm just going to fast forward this one, play just a couple more minutes of it. And then we'll, we'll, fin we'll button this thing up. And that one was about pretty good size, about 2,300 square feet. So she's done discovery, mm -hmm. found out that stuff. Okay. And are you looking specifically in the Bell the Bella Vista area or open to other areas? Um, I, I'd like to be in the Bella Vista area. Okay. Do you have a house to sell uh, before you purchase? Uh, I don't. Okay. Are you in a lease or anything like that or kind of what's your timeline? No, uh, I'm not in the lease or anything like that. And have you looked at any properties in person or just been looking online? Uh, pretty much just online. Okay. Um, so not working with any other agents as a buyer's agent? No. So let me say I liked all the questions until she put the word buyer's agent in there. Like, I like the discovery, but what I wanted to point out to everybody is so you're not working with any other agent is an okay question. You're not working with any other buyer agent. That's just confusing. That's that's a term that the people Dale and I know and the people watching the show know. The average person out there, a oh, buyer agent? What well, I don't I don't know what that is. So there's no yeah. good reason in this scenario. At some point in time, we might want to have some scripting around that. You want your own agent, you want someone to represent you. Stay right. away from industry terms, they kill you. Yeah, so it, because it, it also opens up another can of worms, right, which it, it just implies that there are certain types of agents. And for here, just keep it simple. Agent, you're not working with an agent, right? No, I'm not. Okay, cool. I don't want to introduce the concept that you can have different kinds of agents that you now then think, oh, maybe I should look into what kind of agents there are and which one I want. I don't want to insinuate that or place that idea in your head. Yeah. So again, uh, overall, great discovery. She's going through knocking all those things out. Yep. And by the way, I, you know, when as I listen to it, it's boring, right? It is boring. Like it's da 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 da. That's okay because we're I don't know. And I cut some of this. We're probably four or five minutes into this phone call. Realistically, she's built rapport. They have a good thing going on. Hey, by the way, Dale, I'm just going to ask you a couple of quick questions so I can make sure that I get every, so I have a real good understanding of what you're looking for. Bam, yep. bam, 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 bam. And I didn't always do it that way, but if if it's something where you don't necessarily get it in that conversation, it's more important to get the information. Like yeah. I can tell you how many calls I've gotten off to gotten off of listening to, and people go, and I go, that agent didn't bother to even ask them the price range. Really hard to set up a listing alert without the price range. Now you can guess based on the house they inquired about. But again, then then you get this. Why are you sending me such expensive houses or why are you sending me so cheap houses? Right. Ask, ask all the questions. So I use a form I call the dream home form and it has all those questions on them. I tell every agent who's new, keep this in front of you, fill it out for every person that you're doing that. You, all you're doing is making sure you're not missing data. So. Yeah. 
That makes sense. I, I think uh, I, here's a kind of a general rule that I follow that I want to give um, because I, I think that she could have built some more rapport with the guy. And I would do this. If you, you can ask three discovery questions that are straightforward like this and they answer them, but on the third one or within those three, you have to find something to comment on or to celebrate or whatever it may be. Okay. I like that. Because, because that, that cadence was so dun, 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 dun. And the guy was doing single word answers or, you know, brief answers and he wasn't expanding on them or talking about them, then you should bring it up. Right. Got it. So, uh, you know, um, what, uh, what price range are you looking at? Oh, I'm looking between X and X. Oh, fantastic. Well, there's some really great homes in that price range. And I love looking at that stuff. And there's a lot of great options for you out there. Next discovery question, right? Next boring question. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. You can ask a boring question in a different way too. So to Dale's point. So, oh, it looks like you're looking at a house that's about 2,300 square feet. Sounds like most people who are single probably aren't going to live in a 2,300 square foot house by themselves. Do you, is there other people who are going to be living with you? Got and it. by the way, is that too big or too small? How many bedrooms do you need? Six. Okay. Well, um, I'm just wow. out of curiosity, why do you need six bedrooms? Or That's a even, lot of bedrooms. Uh, or, you know, are you, a, three you, bedrooms. Are you, you the know, leader like, of a band? What's uh... right. the leader of the band? But, you know, but how many bedrooms do you need? You know, three. Okay, great. So um, out of curiosity, is that because other people are living with you or what do you got? You know, it's a nice way to segue into that or, you know, garages like well, some people say oh i need a three-car garage oh cool so um you you got multiple cars well, you know oh yeah you know my my do you have any uh, do you so, have any toys yeah, well, yeah. Have that's cool do you have toys i i have toys i uh you know go-karts and stuff like do you have anything right is it a, you know since you're living this town has a lot of lakes in it there's seven lakes so oh is do you have a boat is that something you're interested in it makes sense to segue when you ask those questions i would prefer you do it that way just like dale but at a minimum, make sure you get the data. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Good. All right, everybody. Does everybody have my email address? Uh, <laughs> I just want to make sure I kind of messed that one up. Hope, I hope nobody, I hope I didn't break anybody because they couldn't find my email address posted in there. Uh, all right. So I'll shoot that PDF out to you if you shoot me an email. But Brian and I will be back again next week to blow all your minds. Right, Brian? Absolutely. And Dale always sets us up at a very high standard. So I have to show up that way. So I appreciate hey, you. Hey, you know what? If I don't sing my praises, only my mom will. Okay. There you go. You guys have a good week. We'll see you next week. Bye.